Kia ora koutou katoa. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll proceed with the hearing of verbal submissions on the draft um, annual plan 2022-23. Um, and uh, we're going to start off on the uh, audio-visual link. And the first one is um, Amy Young. So welcome, Amy. Welcome. Hi. You're not, you're not alone, Amy. No, no, I've got uh, children and my husband's popped home to <laughs> keep the little one from climbing up my leg. So, no, I'm not alone. Oh, fabulous. She's gorgeous. <laughs> right, well, welcome. You can, you well, can... I'm not sure how this Oh, you, 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 <laughs> just, you just speak to your submission. We've read it and um, we're interested to hear. And uh, you've got... Um, uh, five minutes, and uh, if you'd like to leave a little bit of time for um, questions from councillors, but you know, if you want to take the whole five minutes, that's fine too. Just whatever suits you. But there wasn't too much that I needed to add. I think the, the submission the covers it really. I just thought you know, there's another opportunity to really urge the, the council to prioritise Ferry Road um, you know, as well as some of the, the surrounding roads. Uh, we've lived here for most 15 years and I guess in that time particularly with regards to our stretch of, of Ferry Road and, and by that I mean between Williams Road and uh, Ooh, it's Road. not very clear it's Amy that it, it's not very clear the sound so I don't know whether that's um, uh, is, is that any better? Yeah, yeah that's much better okay. uh, So I'm not sure how much of that you missed but I was just Talking about the, in particular for us, the stretch of Ferry Road between Aldwins Road and Nursery Road. And I was saying that we've lived here for almost 15 years, and in that time, we've seen a lot of changes to the way that Ferry Road, this part of Ferry Road, is being used. So there's uh, more traffic, we've had the cycle lanes go in, we've had the introduction of the uh, electric scooters and e-bikes and things like that. Um, but what we haven't seen that I would really like to see is a, a bit of improvement to the safety for pedestrians. So the pedestrian experience uh, along Ferry Road is um, definitely something that needs to be looked at. Um, you'll see in my submission that I talked about, you know, taking a and a couple of kids up Ferry Road, and I'm not sure if any of you have, have done that walk for yourselves, but it can be really stressful, it doesn't feel safe. Um, the fact that the, the road and the footpath uh, really fits all of us, let alone um, you know, Amy, I, I don't know what I don't know what it is, but I think if you just look into your microphone and speak to your microphone, um, no, it, it, you, seem, it is to, on this you seem to be fading in and out. It's so, moving ahead. Yeah. can you hear me now? Are we good now? Yeah, no, that's better. Just stay like that and don't move. <laughs> no problem. Um, the other thing with our stretch of Ferry Road is that it is the main, well, one of the main arterial routes for the emergency vehicles. So um, if you're walking up Ferry Road with your kids and uh, an ambulance or anything goes past, then all the traffic will off the road. So that yeah, no, it's past. still not working, They're Amy. coming onto the footpath. It's still, it's still, it's, so it's obviously not you moving your head at all. It's this, it, it's. So I'll stop the video and see if that helps. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop the video and yeah. see if, if we can just leave the sound. Okay. All right. Is that better? Is that better? Not really, no. no. I just think it's a very poor connection. So maybe if we just move to questions, if you could pop your video back on, no it makes no difference um, because yeah. you might be able to nod your head um, or shake your head if that's um, in line with some of the questions. But just one of the questions that I wanted to know was whether, you know, have you been to the um, community board to um, discuss this particular issue? Over the years, a couple of times, yeah. Through a lot of that, there was sort of, they were saying, well, we're doing the cycle way and there are plans in place to completely change Ferry Road. So, so it's sort of 
So been you've been to the community. To you, you've been to the community board a couple of times because this is this has been in the community mm -hmm. board submissions. So they've obviously mm -hmm. heard what um, you and other residents have had to say about this, um, and yes. are seeking some support from us uh, in terms of the annual plan. So I think I'm getting a nod from Jake. So and um, I'm sure I'm going to get a nod from Yanni. Yep. And um, yep. and Sarah as well. So everyone's nodding from your community board area. Um, so um, are there any other particular questions that people wanted to ask? I mean, I think you've highlighted the issue, the dangers, the pedestrian, lack of pedestrian support, the, and it's that um, increased traffic, oh, main thoroughfare and, um, and the um, bi-directional shared stretch of road. Yeah. With the cycleway and the footpath. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the cycleway oh. and the footpath is a problem. If you'd like to submit anything a, a bit further in writing with just that some of that personal experience, then would you be able yeah. to just spend some time on email and flick that through to um, the Secretariat? Yes. That would be great. Okay. Look, thank you very much, Amy. I'm sorry that the sound quality hasn't been so good, but um, thank you very much for going to all of the effort of submitting, but then also making yourself available to talk to us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, next, um, the next person is in person, is uh, Peter Scholes. And um, he is going to speak to us on the draft annual plan, but also um, the proposal to increase rates on vacant central city land. Yeah. So please come forward. And so because you're covering off both items, there's, there's 10 minutes available. You could speak to both issues and then um, uh, have us answer. Please feel free to sit, sit down and, um, oh, thank you. and the... Uh, and, you know, mask wearing is um, is optional if you prefer to take it off. If you prefer to leave it on, oh, now I recognise you. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! That's the end of it, is it? Oh, no. Peter. <laughs> Thank you, Mick. Right. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll speak firstly to the draft annual plan. Uh, so fixed charges, the large charges that are fixed like classics. Fixed charges have enlarged. For civics fix the fixed charges, discharge the fixed charges. And then about buildings and art. Big buildings, little art. Big cost, little cost. Big interest, Small interest. Small crowds, big crowds. Small use, big use. Small life, big life. Let the record show you are smart. Take a swig and install the art. And my final one for the draft in your pen is on alcohol licensing. I buy his lies as he eats his pie. I spy and look what I clarify. Reg 413, I reply, can we apply 413? He flies away in a huff, leaving me with his lie. Do I now carry on to the yes, next? Yes, but I hope you submit a copy of that. I did this thank time, you. Miss. Great. <laughs> I think the councillors will enjoy having a copy. Oh, um, yes, yeah, so you might as well carry on, and then, then there's, if there's time for questions, we can cover both. Okay, thank you. So this is my submission on the vacant sites. The differential, big differential, big encouragement. The next one is on landscaping. Let the townscape not escape. Landscape the cityscape and make it ship shape. It's got Four avenues. 
renew the avenues. Let there be no flow, let floor within all four. Stop the eyesore and explore. Long enough, derelict enough, make the city perfect, be tough and tell them to get stuffed. You, ha you have had long enough. And my last bit is on uh, clean windows, yeah. I mean clean. Stop the unseen being unclean. Thank you, that's... Because that's what makes them seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Thank you. That's, Thank you. That's lovely. Um, does anyone have any questions? I dare you to... Only if you can ask it in poetry. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, Peter, I'm not sure. It's very you, cool, your poetry, you know. But if any the quantify, like you like to increase the rates, you know, a moment you four point eight six percentage. What your the expectation? If we increase, increase how much percentage? And for what? The rates are becoming a burden on us. Um, because, um, well, with the price of electricity and all those things that you know are going up, and our incomes. You know, particularly mine, that being a beneficiary is not going up at the same rate. Yeah, they are becoming quite a burden on us. Yeah, and um, hopefully by removing the fixed charges, um, that'll lower some of our costs and redistribute it that more um, that burden more evenly uh, across the city. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Well, I could I could just just mention that I mean one of the one of the rates um, that the heritage one for the a contribution to the cathedral yeah. that was specifically a dollar amount because it was it worked out at something like seven dollars a year but less than ten dollars a year. Mm across the city yeah. and it was a one-off so yeah. um, when it's finished yeah. it goes yeah. when you build it into the rate mm. then it stays <laughs> and so that was the that was the theory behind the the, the annual a, a set yeah. rate just based on one rate for the city because it was literally um, less than two cups of coffee a year <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was, mm. and that will and it will disappear once that's been paid. There's over half of it been paid already. So, yeah. But that yeah. that was just an explanation from my point of view because mm -hmm. I was the there at the time that we introduced it. Yeah. For that reason. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And yes, we'll grab the we'll grab grab the poetry off you. Oh, thank you. I'm going to have to name you the Bard of Christchurch shortly. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Right, the next um, the next person is Alison Alsop. Thank you very much. And there's a, a presentation on the on the hub for councillors. I have another name, but that's my married name. Oh, I'm hello, Alison. <laughs> I'm presenting as a resident, so it's not like I've come undercover or anything like that. <laughs> hello. Um, I just want to say thank you to the staff too. I cocked it up online when I tried to do my submission and then sent screenshots and they very kindly typed it up. Thank you, Joe, and, um, and sent it back to me. So thank you for putting up with my ineptitude. Um, I, I primarily wanted to make mention of Edgeware Pool in this um, time that I've got. Very quickly, though, I did say in part of my submission that I think that the issue of not being able to change a struck rate needs to be investigated. I understand that uh, that is unable to be changed by the City Council because it's a central government legislative issue. Uh, so, for example, if you have a house on a bit of land, um, once your uh, house is demolished, I'm thinking about earthquake people, you can't then, with the reduced value of what you've got, alter what you're paying in rates. 
over the 12 months. Over the 12 until months. Until a new valuation is that's done. Right. Yeah, that's so, a legislative Yeah, thing. so that's the There was an government. exception made in Christchurch after the earthquakes, but that exception is now that's reverted right. to the old statute. Yes. Yep, good. And there are still houses being demolished. Ours goes in August, so therefore we could be paying that higher rate for you know almost a year or whatever. We're lucky we can afford it. I'm imagining that many people won't be able to. Right, Edgeware Pool. I'm not going to read the slides um, because that would be boring. Um, these are mainly about photographs. This is the pool. Uh, it was built in 1934, and it was built after a, a full-on fundraising drive by the community, by the locals. So my point there is that the pool started very strongly rooted in the community and still does. Um, in the 1990s, the school swimming sports uh, from all around the area, schools came in and used the pool, as well as residents, obviously, as well. In 2000s, it was really, in the early 2000s, it was very clear that the council wanted to close the pool. Um, that's me there with Ruby. She was two there. She's now 23. Uh, we raised this issue at that stage. The council, uh, we, we suggested the council was reducing hours as they were at that stage and described it as the beginning of a slippery slope, but the council's quoted in that story as saying, we are assuring the community that their pool is not under threat, which is quite clearly not what happened. There were protests as well. Again, we, we're a very passionate, driven, active community in St Albans, so down to Cathedral Square we went in 2008, and that's Ruby again at the bottom right. I'm only highlighting her because of the time frame, uh, and she's about eight, I think, in that... Um, protest uh, photograph. Now the main thing about Edgeware is it's an outdoor pool. It was the most popular outdoor pool across the city uh, in November to March, which is the summer season. The number of swimmers and people who attended were around 12,000. What the council did around 2004 and 2005, just before it closed it, is it uh, made uh, reduced the hours, which reduced the number of people who could come in, and then actually they made it um, attendance free. So the, the income was, was virtually nothing, and the number of people attending, because of the reduced hours, dropped from around 12,000 to 5,400. Now, the reason I've put that in there is it's akin to putting a television program on at 1 a.m. in the morning and then taking it off because no one's watching it. It was set up to, 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 uh, to make a stronger argument for the council to close it and demolish it. The council's uh, strategic framework around resilient communities, livable city, healthy environment, prosperous economy, all of these things are ticked by the retention, or not retention, of the rebuilding of, of Edgeware Pool. Uh, there was a media release went out towards the end of 2021. There's Kohinga there, our um, community centre being opened. Uh, Leanne, there you are in the middle. It was a great day. And it's being very well used, and it's in fact bringing a lot more people into the community. And in that media release there, it mentions the butchers, the supermarket, the bakery, the greengrocers. Uh, they are all seeing an increase in uh, numbers, number of people and um, financially as well. So that's the prosperity part of the uh, strategic plan ticked. We're a very resilient environment. We have a long history of activism in St Albans. It's been affected by the earthquakes very, very badly. I know as many areas in Christchurch has, but also the floodings as well. And in fact, the number of houses, um, and I did have this on my phone, have increased. Uh, they have doubled the number of new dwellings in St Albans in the last 20 years. Um, I have got the figures from Robert Wright, which I will get to you. But even with the slowdown over COVID, the number of new dwellings are now um, huge, up around the sort of 1900, I think we're getting um, in, in the last uh, few years. So I'll get those figures to you. I had them on my phone, I can't find them now. Um, active transport's really important. Most people go to the pool and have gone to the pool by walking, scootering, um, and there's a low-speed neighbourhood greenway on Trafalgar Street. We've got primary schools in the area, retirement villages and so forth. The nearest pool, which is an indoors pool, is four and a half kilometres on very busy roads um, away from, uh, which is Graham Condon. Uh, where else? Sorry, just bear with me. And I think that might be the end of it. Yep. Um, but I also wanted to make a point too that indoor pools and outdoor pools are very, very different. And I know that there has been some mention about the metro pool in the central city, as well as uh, Graham Condon. The thing about an outdoor pool is you can have an entire 
day at a pool. You can have a half a day at a pool. You can put a rug down and sit down with friends and family. You can sit on grass. You can be outdoors. It is a very, very different environment. This is a project that will be run by the community, for the community, and for what you could get back for it, it is a very, very good uh, investment. And I'd just like to acknowledge Pauline Cotter and her work on getting this um, proposal across the line and into the plan. It's um, been a long time coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we've pretty much used up the yeah, five. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, I'm hopeless with um, time. No, I know Mike's got his hand up, but um, I've um, used up the time. So. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thank you. Um, Alistair Price is the next one. Can I take off my mask? Please? Yes, please. You, you, you're most welcome to. Thank you. And I've just pulled out my hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be a moment. Um, thank you. Um, good afternoon, and thank you for allowing me to present my submission. After last year's submission, I went back and reread the Council's presentation on water. It used the word think on a few occasions. My understanding of the word think means you do not know or you do not have completed your research. Hence, I am back here again today with some of my research and comments. First of all, I fully support water charging that is applied on the same basis for every residential ratepayer. I have sought information from the City Council and the staff are unable to provide me with information to some very simple requests. I have used the um, City Council Water Reporter to obtain information on over 500 searches. I am fully versed in water management principles having provided a water billing service to landlords in other parts of New Zealand. What we know to date, prior to 2021, residential water metres were read every two years. So how the council worked out charging basis on a three monthly cycle, I do not know. Excess residential charges usage has never been charged since amalgamation. What has the City Council proposed? A very simple explanation. Leave the water charges based on capital value, lower or increase the previous daily water allowance to 700 litres per day and charge for any excess um, average water usage over and above 700 litres in three monthly cycles. There are major problems with that with billing. If there's a mistake, it will take three months, or sorry, three cycles to get back to the, zero, uh, to the correct cycle. I had a daily allowance of 1,383 litres. I now have a litre of 700 litres. My daily average for a year is 638 and my three monthly summer average is 920 litres per day. Sorry. Oh. The council appears to know very little about summer usage. The City Council still cannot explain how many residential players, rate payers will pay for excess water charges. I ask this under the Official Information Act. The City Council thinks it may be the same value as uh, for the estimation for 2021. The City Council, I asked, how was the expected income? The answer is, we don't know. The City Council has a 40,000 plus Rate power problem from shared metres, no reads, and faulty water metres. There is a sample of um, a subdivision I did. Um, if you want to know what it is, it's actually Redwood Springs. Um, the rainfall figures for this year are well up for February on previous years. Nearly 80 millimetres of rain as compared with 16 millimetres the year before. 
What is fair? A water allowance that is based on capital value of the property and is charged for excess water based on annual usage. Or a fixed charge, how most other councils do it, and then a water charge for every cubic metre consumed. This is how most councils manage water charging um, where metres are in place. The City Council has not allowed for excess water charges for residential rate payers in this year's budget. It shows up as a zero. This will have no effect on the Council's income. Any review now will have no effect on budgeted income. Please consider what has been proposed and bring in a proposal that is fair to all residential rate payers. I'd just quickly like to add my five minutes I would have at home, if I'd had my sprinkler on, I would have used around about 80 litres of water in five minutes. So that will give you an idea of the volumes which Christchurch has to go through because of watering gardens and so forth. That I'm disappointed in the council and how it has handled the water metering situation. I have requested the value of the um, cost of um, meter reading services. I have a very good idea and currently those meter readers are there are earning well below the cost of living um, wage, living wage. Yeah, we're kind of run out of time, but I mean it's a really interesting point. Um, what, what I can say is that we can't, we can't actually alter this without going out to another special consultative procedure because that's what we use to, to put this into the LTP. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with you about the, um, the, 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 st the standard charge and then the um, volumetric charging. I don't disagree with you. But that's not the position that has been um, adopted. So... Um, can I just make yeah. a quick comment on that? From what I can gather, the council was given no other option by staff to consider. Because I asked that question under the Inf Official Information Act. Yeah, it's all documented in the LTP process. I mean, look, I think I'm because you've only got five minutes for this. So I just, I'd like, to, I'd like to take this offline and and just get some further advice. Um, uh, because I mean, we won't be able to amend that annual plan other than potentially defer something until um, it's introduced. We we do want to change water use in summer, which was the focus of it. So um, I but, fully agree. Yeah. But so 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 what yeah. So what I'm gonna do is just say that we you've made your presentation. It's been a very powerful presentation and I'm just gonna um, take that as your um, submission to us today and uh, it will be considered uh, and um, will be reported back on, you know, as part of this process. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, the next one is uh, Andre Moore. Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much for having me. So I'm here to speak to you about my submission, in particular the Milne Spark Sutherlands Road intersection. I just want to start by talking about the struggles I've had with accessing information about uh, the details in the annual plan and this project in particular. Uh, so I, I never got to see the annual plan until the day it went out for public consultation. And this project was there as, and beyond 2025, namely the 27-28 year. Uh, we were told by staff it was getting moved to the 22 year, um, but it wasn't until this consultation went out that I found out it was still sitting in the 27, 28 year. It took me two weeks to get an answer as to when this project is sitting in the plan. Um, I had the same issue in the long term plan um, consultation last time. So if it's taken me weeks to find out when something in is, is in a plan, we've got a real issue with the process um, when we engage on annual and long term plans. There is a real issue there. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I'm speaking to you today to basically talk about Hallsville being the fastest growing area in Christchurch, but it's quickly becoming one of the most poorly connected communities in Christchurch. 
we think of three main entrances as Nahuzal. It's Hulzal Road, Sparks Road and Kashmir Road. There isn't a footpath that actually takes you all the way down any of these. Uh, it's, it's, it's not really an accessible place to get to in many ways. Uh, the first image we're looking at here is the intersection uh, in question here. So this is the Sparks Mill and Sutherlands Road intersection. So to our right is Sutherlands Road uh, and the intersection there. If we look further down is the Milnes Road intersection. So it's two intersections side by side. And this isn't actually taken at peak hour either. Uh, it does get even busier than this. So behind that great big tree in the middle there, there is a large retirement village being built. Not a small retirement home, we're talking a large retirement village. Behind, um, behind where this photo is taken, a preschool is being built, uh, as well as a housing development. Um, and further up, uh, further down the road in front of you and to the right is a significant housing development. Further down the road again is more housing being built. We're talking a huge amount of development taking place around this area. Uh, and to the right down Sutherland's Road lives Hallswood Downs. So I've heard from residents who, who live a couple of hundred metres away from the nearest playground, which will be to your left down Milnes Road. They have to drive a couple of hundred metres down the road to their nearest playground. Looking at this, I, you, you don't really stand much chance in crossing the road here, yet there is entire housing developments being built here that need to cross this road to get to uh, their nearest amenities. If we go to the second image, this uh, so this here is the uh, pedestrian access for residents living in Sutherland Road housing developments. This is where they need to go to cross the road, or this is their access to nearby shops and amenities. So if someone's in a wheelchair, walking frame, mobility scooter, crutch, they, as you can see, they don't stand much chance of actually making it to their nearby shops. And what they're not just having to wait weeks for this access, uh, they're being told that they potentially need to wait years for this access. So as I say, the intersection that we're looking at here isn't budgeted to be improved until 2027, 2028, despite all of the development I've just mentioned, and that's happening right now. Uh, and the next image, the next, there should be one other, there should be a third, no, no dramas at all if there's not. There was a third there, um, which just showed the blind turn out from Milnes Road, but that, that's all right. Uh, so interestingly enough, Sparks Road, and there we go. So that's the blind turn out from Milnes Road. Uh, so we're looking at a turn over there. It's, it's, uh, it's a 60 K road, but it's very easy for cars to end up doing 70 or 80 um, coming head on from where you see there. So interestingly enough, the Sparks Road improvements are budgeted over the next two years. Uh, however, for some reason, this intersection right smack bang in the middle of those improvements isn't budgeted to be improved for another five years. It makes fairly little sense, and I imagine the doing it this way will cost a lot more in the long run, having to come back a few years later um, and, and start a lot of things from scratch. So. Uh, in us building all these new subdivisions, um, the way our budgets read currently is sort of sending a signal that uh, to property developers, new residents in the area, that all the money paid for uh, rates uh, and, and development contributions, the money all comes in but isn't going to be spent for another good few years uh, in this area where it needs to be. We're not talking just weeks or months, we're talking years. Uh, so if council is serious about its climate goals, then we can't build new subdivisions um, tell families they'll need to keep driving to the nearest playground for another five years. Um, if council is serious about uh, our commitments to uh, the disabled community, our older residents, um, and making our, access, our city accessible for all, we can't go building new subdivisions and tell communities they'll be trapped in their own homes and not be able to access nearby amenities or cross the road safely for another few years. Um, that's ultimately what we're doing here. Um, not everyone has the privilege of being able to jump in a car and drive somewhere either. Um, I'd note that this intersection is actually nowhere near any bus stops either, as, uh, as is the case with, unfortunately, many communities in Halsall. Um, I myself am over a kilometre away from the nearest bus stop to town. Um, so if council's serious about safe roads, we can't delay uh, improvements to this intersection for another five years. So I'm urging you to bring the uh, improvements for this intersection forward 
to the 2022-2023 year, our community is not prepared uh, to wait another five years. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you've really talked it out, but um, I mean, I'm assuming you've raised it with the community board, so they would have advised you why this was deferred on the capital program. So no, I've really struggled oh, to find information. Okay. Um, Thanks very much. Have, haven't been given a reason for that at all. I just asked you if you'd raised uh, it with the community board, but well, you said no. For the last couple of years, I've been raising it with the community board. Um, but as I say, which is why they've probably recommend yeah. the community board yeah. recommended that we look at this into. Oh yes, yes. It wasn't. Yeah. The, this item was. No, no, no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The, this Sorry. item was in our community board's point. submission yesterday. That's right. So, yeah, it yeah. was in the submission that you saw yesterday. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, and there was another resident who came and submitted as well. Yes, yes. Okay, thank right. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, the next item is, uh, we've got a bit of a break. Is yes. Eric here? Is Nick no, here? No, I no. Okay. unfortunately I've tried to bring people forward, but we just can't. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to adjourn the meeting until um, 3 o'clock. Thank you.
Thank you very much. I just noticed that Eric Pawson had joined us. And so um, before we go to a break, we'll hear the submission from Eric. Thank you. Great to see that, and great to see it come together in in one place. Um, I'm interested in how this actually works from the perspective of people um, in the community, because it does say that the Parks Unit is responsible for coordinating the Cross Council program, reporting to the co-governance body, and engaging with the community. And although that's uh, good to hear, it would be nice to be reassured that that. Um, engagement has some sort of facilitative process behind it and somebody has thought about how this is actually going to work because many of us who work in the red zone space don't find it at all easy to uh, read council activities or figure out quite how to um, work with uh, bureaucracies. Sometimes one can identify the entry point invariably then one gets passed on to somebody else uh, further inside the organisation. Sometimes they are extremely helpful and sometimes uh, you feel as if you're rather in the way. Uh, so uh, this is just a plea that uh, if the Parks Department is, is, is going to work this, then uh, they um, give some thought to the facilitation. When I was thinking about this this morning, um, this is not a, a direct parallel but the sort of portal that Snap, Send, Solve provides is really, really good because if you've got something that needs fixing, then you know where to go, you get an acknowledgement, and when it's fixed, you're told. So the loop is actually closed. I'm not suggesting that we need an app for the red zone, but some sort of process where one feels that one has been heard and that one then knows that um, something uh, is in train uh, would be um, very, very helpful and very reassuring. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, the, I guess the purpose of having this um, in, the, in the annual plan for, for consultation is to get exactly this sort of feedback. So um, it's an incredibly helpful um, submission, I thought it was, when when, when um, I read it. So, I mean, and I, I love the Snap, Send, Solve kind of concept. I mean, not it as, a, as, a, as an app, but, but something that you can easily yes. enter either an interest in something, or yes. something so, that, so that something happens as a result of you making yes. that, that, that approach. So would you see that for maybe some of the temporary use um, mechanisms? An app would be a, an app-based system for applying for temporary use? I don't um, think it has to be an app-based system, but some sort of process that is obvious. Right. Uh, so that we know uh, where the entry point is, Yeah. that when we've gone through whatever that portal is, that we've been heard in some way, and that we then know that it's not got lost. Right. And we know who, who, who we're talking to, and preferably that they're going to be helpful. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. well, I, think, I think people would generally um, agree that it, it does require that. So, I mean, it's a very valuable submission to make. So, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we'll, um, sorry about that earlier on. So I'll adjourn the meeting um, until um, 3 o'clock. Oh, 3.30. 3.30. Sorry, I'll adjourn the meeting till 3.30. Thank you.
Okay, thank you all councillors. If we could now turn our attention uh, back to the table, thank you very much. Uh, we have the next uh, submitter uh, on our annual plan, the Governor's Bay Jetty Restoration Trust. And um, Louisa Eads and someone else is with you. <laughs> so sorry, I don't recognise her. people with their masks off. Um, if people want to take their masks off for their presentation, absolutely fine. Yeah. Thank you. So I just moved the slides on myself. Is that a I? real photo? Yeah. That is <laughs> no, it's real. I did a double one of these at Sumner. The other just day, like recently. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. There was one at Sumner recently. Oh, uh, yeah, it was the same day, I think, when they right. had the double one. Yeah, double one. Yeah. Just a bit of inspiration. <laughs> Oh yeah, very good. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that you have our undivided, yeah. <laughs> good rainbow chat. Cool. Shall I? will start then. You want to start the timer? Okay. Kia ora koutou. I am Louisa Eads, and I'm the secretary of Governors Bay Jetty Restoration Trust. And this is Sally Ann Fitzharding, and she's one of our trustees. Thank you for the opportunity to um, to hear us today. Um, I'm sure you've read our submissions, so we're not going to repeat what it says in there. Um, instead, let us take you back to New Brighton, 1965. The old wooden pier, built in 1894, was demolished, demolished overnight by the council. It must have been a shock to the community waking up on the 13th of October, 1965, and seeing their pier gone. The Pier and Foreshore Society, a group of local residents, had been campaigning to save their pier, but they were not defeated by its demolition. For 30 years, they lobbied the council and fundraised with the help of the local community. And in 1997, the new pier was opened. What does this have to do with Governor's Bay, Jetty? Well, there are a number of similarities and a few differences. Firstly, they are the same length both 300 metres, but the setting is very different. The pier is made of concrete and stands high above the water, jutting into the open sea with waves crashing about it. The jetty is made of wood and is close to the water and it sits atop a shallow, sheltered bay surrounded by a volcanic landscape. Secondly, they both connect the people of Christchurch to the city, to the sea. They are not a boring necessity in the way that a road or a footpath is. They are a place for inspiration, a place to experience nature and to feel the wind on your face, a place to escape the humdrum of everyday life, a place to enhance your well-being and feel close to the ocean. They are both a place to be enjoyed by everyone, from our tamariki to our kaimatua. You can access them in a wheelchair or a pushchair, any age, any race, any social background. The pier and the jetty do not discriminate. <laughs> the jetty. Go that way. There we go. The jetty is like a park, a swimming pool, and a boardwalk all rolled into one. And unlike the pier, the water is accessible. You can jump off the jetty, swim around the jetty, to the shore, or launch a kayak or paddleboard from one of the ramps. Governor's Bay is well known for being sheltered and calm and provides an excellent location for our young people to access the water in a safe environment. Um, and the third similarity is the reason why we are here today, asking for capital funding of 815000 in the annual plan. After 30 years of lobbying and fundraising, the Pier and Foreshore Society raised almost $2 million to rebuild New Brighton Pier. This was matched by $2 million from Christchurch City Council. Governor's Bay Jetty Restoration Trust has been lobbying and fundraising for over seven years. We have raised over 920000 in cash and pro bono work towards a $3.5 million total project costs. The great news, we have now signed the construction contract and have ordered the timber from Australia. Construction will begin in August this year, that's only three months away, and as soon as the piles arrive. The rebuild is scheduled to be finished by the end of February next year in time for sell GP. The council has contributed 935,000 so far. Half of the 3.5 million dollars, sorry, half of 3.5 million dollars is 1.75 million. 
for the council to have an equal share in the known rebuild cost, 815,000 is needed. This is what we're asking for. We need to access this funding in August to minimise the amount we borrow on the loan that the council recently approved. If we don't get the fundraising that we're asking today, then we'll have to borrow the $815,000. Interest on that amount will be over $30,000 a year over the five-year term of the loan. The interest would add an extra $175,000 to the current project cost. In other words, if you agree to release $815,000 in August, it will save up to $175,000. On the part of the Jetty Trust, we will match the council's 50% by raising another 820,000. This will bring our contribution up to 1.75 million too. If we aren't able to fundraise this amount by August, we'll draw down on the loan facility to the extent required, and then we'll fundraise to pay the cost of interest um, on however much we borrow on the loan. We will continue fundraising during and after the Jetty is rebuilt and until we have paid our equal share. Then at this point, the new unencumbered jetty can be transferred back to the council as a council-owned new hardwood, hardwood asset, which has at least a 50-year lifespan and will more likely last well, so will likely last more than 100 to 150 years as the current one has. The trust would like to continue its involvement, involvement both the boat shed relocation restoration and as kaitiaki of the jetty. We anticipate this will involve being responsible for minor repairs and maintenance and making the site, making sure security measures are in place. As you can see from our totaliser up there, the funding we've requested will have a profound impact on our fundraising progress. Not only that, but a 50% commitment from Council is evidence of an equal community council partnership, as was the case for the New Brighton peer rebuild. As such, it will encourage the community to give and to get involved. In short, it will buoy the Trust's fundraising efforts considerably. Our income streams before, during and after the jetty rebuild include sponsoring a plank to get your name on the jetty, events such as music tribute shows, a 5k jetty fun run, jetty to jetty ch kayak challenge, sale of merchandise and rental of kayak and pedalboard storage. And actually we're doing a jetty beer as well. New Brighton Pier and Governors Bay Jetty are the same but different. They are both examples of a community stepping up and taking responsibility to save the things that they love and want with the support of council. They are both examples of projects where council has equal share in funding the rebuild, but they are both unique in their own ways. Unlike the pair, the jetty will allow the public easy accessibility to the water. We ask that you formally approve 50% capital funding for the rebuild of the jetty. We now have certainty of pricing. We also ask that you allocate 115,000 capital funding in the 2022-23 annual plan to be released in August 2022 in time for construction. This project requires 70% of the total project cost to be paid up front, which is why we're asking for the money to be released in August. And just as a final point, to reiterate the key issues running through Council's draft annual plan, number one is affordably, affordability. If the council agrees to contribute 100, so 815 in their annual plan, the total and the total project cost does not increase, then ca council's capital contribution to the project will be just 22% of the 2015 council estimate to rebuild it, which that was 7.8 million. That that is incredible, particularly given annual inflation of 6.9% in the last quarter. And number two is deliverability. The scheduled completion date is the end of February 2023. This is a large project delivered by the community to the people of Christchurch well before the end of the financial year. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? Just, just to repeat some numbers. So the project cost is? Total project cost, known project cost is 3.5 million. And what was the estimate that the council gave you for how much it would cost for us to do it? The original one was 7.8 million. For, uh, I, I, I was ago. asking that question this week and I couldn't remember it off the top of my head. So thank you very much yeah. for repeating that. I've Do you got know the why source. the council did a, a dollar for dollar fun match with the um, Brighton Pier? I don't have any details of that. I just have what was in the council library. I could, I could share what I was told when I became the MP for the area. Oh, cool. That the council didn't really want to do it. So they said, if you raised half of it, we'll pay for the rest. And um, they would cost me. <laughs> Look what happened. So, <laughs> that was the, I don't know whether there's any veracity to it, but um, yeah. it, it, it does have a ring of truth to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what you've done so far is absolutely incredible. So... Um, Aaron. Yeah, love your work and always love a bargain. 
Do you know what, because you're over that way, do you know what our annual budget is that we have that goes towards all of our jetties, waterways? Andrew may know it, or staff could find out if you don't. Yeah, we, but, we can get that information. Oh, they might know, because they seem to know almost everything. <laughs> Do you guys know? Budget? No. Oh, okay. That's all right. We can find that out. But, but we because... will get that information okay. for you. Um, Thank you. I mean, I, I think the two figures for me is the 3.5 versus 7.8, and that was in 2015. So. And then you um, buy, buy it for half of that. So yep. Then we get it for half that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we're building no, a house for 2,000 square metres. They meter currently own it at that. the moment. Yeah, they thanks. paid us a dollar for it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the dollar yeah. is in his office. Yeah, and, um, and we're, we're not. Go, I don't think that the council will give back the same dollar, but <laughs> at some point there will there will be a dollar exchange um, at some point in the future. Yeah, I look, thank you very much. I have quoted this example. I, I don't know if I've said this before, but I was overseas at the time that the dollar was paid. And I announced it to the conference that I was speaking to that the dollars, and they all clapped. <laughs> so it's an extraordinary project, and um, yeah, you should be really proud of what you've achieved thus far. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other question? Yep. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> right. The next one is um, Sport Canterbury Green Prescription, Isabella Buckingham, uh, Zainab, and Alima Nazari. Kia welcome. Tēnā koutou katoa, thank you for having us today. Uh, my name is Isabella, I'm the Green Prescription Program Lead at Sport Canterbury. Uh, with me today, um, there's just been a slight change of my guests today, uh, so I have with me Hamadir. Hamadir is one of my uh, former clients at the Green Prescription Service. Um, yeah, awesome. Okay. Um, so since 2018, the Christchurch City Council Sport and Recreation Team and the Sport Canterbury Green Prescription Team have partnered to support Green Prescription clients to access council facilities for free with the provision of pool cards. In 2021, this initiative supported Green Prescription clients a total of 2,056 times to access the council pools who would not have otherwise, especially those who require a low impact option or are facing financial barriers. Uh, so in the spirit of diversity and inclusion, the Green Prescription wishes to provide equitable access for our women and girls who are facing barriers to being active. So they can use a pull card to access to Po Toy Toy for free during their women's only sessions on a Wednesday afternoon. We are not requesting any other extension to the pull card provision other than to include the Po Toy Toy women's only sessions. This would extend the pull card use to include the 3pm to 9.30pm time slot at Tipo Toy Toy only. We believe the small extension would be well received by the community. Between April uh, 2021 and March 2022, the Green Prescription supported 1,863 women in Christchurch. 79 of these women live in the Linwood area and a further 157 live in the surrounding suburbs. While not all clients choose to take up a pull card, it is often a preference for female clients who cannot exercise with men due to cultural beliefs. I'll introduce Hamadir um, after I've spoken just to have a, a quick talk about that. So at Tipo Toy Toy uh, in 2021, the Green Prescription clients used their pull cards 86 times and this year the number is sitting currently at 154 pull card uses. Access to the pull card supports women in a variety of ways and our numbers do show this. 70% of our clients are more active since receiving green prescription support. 85% of clients feel more confident to sustain physical activity. And 74% of clients notice positive health changes since being more active. We've also had 650 referrals since March 2021 for Māori and Pacifica, so we're trying to reach those communities as well. 
Across Waitaha, Canterbury, um, we've unfortunately seen a drop in the number of women who are uh, being physically active. So uh, the Ministry of Health has noted that uh, only 27% meet the Ministry of Health guidelines. Um, and by age 17, 68% of young women are already avoiding taking part in physical activity due to body confidence issues. The Te Pau Toi Toi facility um, is very popular with our clients and the rest of Eastern Christchurch. On average, since they started, 183 women attend the Te Pau Toi Toi women's only sessions each Wednesday. On one day, 75% of women surveyed said they were at the pool at this time of day purely because the session was women's only. By allowing women to use the pool card during the Te Pau Toi Toi women's only sessions, it would support the council's reasoning for providing a women's only session through encouraging all women and girls to feel more confident being active and through encouraging equitable access. It would also be very favourable for our female clients who can only attend these particular pool sessions due to religious and cultural beliefs. Currently, conversations are being held between Sport Canterbury and the City Council Sport and Recreation team about further ways we can better personalise and manage pool card provision for green prescription clients so that we can provide a more equitable service that is inclusive of our clients' needs. Ultimately, I do want to emphasise that pool card provision beyond the usual 9 to 3 slot to include Te Pau Toi Toi's women's only session uh, would only be provided on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, to women either identified as either having financial hardship, those with cultural considerations as well, so, uh, such as our female Muslim clients. Um, so to clarify, people are referred to the green prescription based on health criteria, so ages 18 plus and medically stable for low to moderate exercise, and those referral criteria are separate from the barriers we are observing to poor access, which predominantly present as financial hardship and cultural considerations. Simply put, we want to remove those barriers and give women access to the women's only session at Te Pau Toi Toi with a pool card. And I would love to hand over to uh, my former client, Hamadir. Um, so Hamadir is uh, a client who enjoys attending the women's only sessions, but finds it challenging at the moment in the current settings with the pool card. Hamadir, would you like to share your thoughts? Um, are you comfortable doing that on pool use? Uh, hi, uh, sorry, my Thank English you. is not good, and uh, I can't good speak English. But just uh, I want to say about the Muslim people, is have uh, lots of problem about the exercise, and uh, uh, actually mm, uh, young person like young girls and like me and young woman is uh, we have a, a rheumatism, but uh, I I need to more exercise like in the gym and pool. But we stay at uh, like around uh, eight uh, or nine years uh, to stay about the open the pool. But a uh, long time, but just uh, now to this year at the um, open the pool. But uh, this one is just a little bit um, expensive for the, um, for uh, refugee people. But uh, we don't have any gym because young uh, girls uh, and young women is very need to gym uh, because we can't uh, uh, exercise with men. But um, we have a problem with this because is uh, um, because young woman is very need to uh, exercise and some like we start uh, uh, for one year and volleyball is ve very good um, but just. Uh, the Hagley just give a one year on um, the gym Hagley uh, just we can one year mm -hmm. and after this year is finished but they can't uh, give again they charge again for the um, because this one is just for one day a week and the pool is like this just one day a week that's very hard for the Muslim people mm -hmm. thank yeah. you very much sorry but just, I can't go this explain. Just oh, yeah, explain very well. <laughs> thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So that's the end of the. That's all. Thank you very much. But for your time. Uh, all mm, uh, women is very um, thank you for uh, New Zealand because um, uh, too much help for Muslim people, too much help for refugee people. But just to if 
uh, you can help for exercise. We thank you so, so much. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, assalamu alaikum, Ramadan <laughs> Mubarak. So, <laughs> thank, thank you. you for making a presentation. Is this the first time you've made a presentation to the council? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, welcome. You've, you've done really well. Um, Aaron. Yeah, so, and thank you so much for, for highlighting this, and, uh, and it's great to be part of a city that has started down this road. Should we not be considering going forward having women only sessions at all of our pools at least once a week and the gyms? Because you look at um, out at uh, Graham Condon, which is closer to my place, mm. you can see between the two. But if you had the woman only session, like pick your day of the week, it'd be good to stagger them. So every day of the week, there would be at least one facility where there was a session at. Would that not be a good something for us to look at? Absolutely. I think that would be very well received by the community and I'm thrilled to hear that that's something that is being thought of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Dawn, could we look into that? Or Leanne? Yep. Yeah, that would be cool. Yep. Thank you. And I apologise, it should have been Eden Mubarak. <laughs> I apologise, I realised that. Um, yeah. Uh, Celeste. Um, and well done. It was a great presentation and I've heard really good Thank things you. about the programme. Um, well, something I've wondered about is, in terms of health and well-being more generally, would it be useful to consider something like the hot pools as well? Because I realise it's not, not necessarily exercising, but it is about mental health and having access to those other facilities. Is it, you know, having that a woman's only time there would be useful? Mm -hmm. Yes. What do you think? Would you like to share your thoughts on that, Hamadir? <coughs> Just the, uh, the Linwood pool? Oh, so these are the hot Brighton. pools at New Brighton. New Brighton. Do you know the hot ones pools? in New Brighton? Oh, then Slightly New Brighton. different. It might be outside <coughs> of the yeah, scope, but, but if we were able to look at it, would that be uh, something that... I'm not to uh, understand about okay. the, um, yeah. the um, New Brighton, about yeah, about because, yeah. because just we um, mm. know about the... No, that, that's great. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, Yanni, I will take you since um, you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Just just quickly, and thank you for the work that you're doing. It, it just got me thinking, should we not just be thinking about extending um, the green prescription for everyone that's on the program to use our pools at more times, given the health and the wellbeing outcomes that you, you would have? Hmm. I definitely think it's worthwhile considering. Um, at this time, we're just looking for the extension for the women's only session just to make sure that we're, we're considerate of, of both Sport Canterbury and the Christchurch City Council's needs. Um, but we would be happy to have that conversation um, in the future. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you, Yanni. Right. Okay. Mm. Thanks. Cool. Um, right. So, look, thank you very much. And thank you um, for your submission today. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, and support, and uh, obviously you've you've touched a um, a nerve with uh, with their counsellors. So thank you for doing so. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much for your time. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Right. So um, our last submission is Tennis Canterbury Region um, Emma Johns and someone called Di Keenan. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to come and speak to our submission. Uh, it's a number of years since uh, Tennis Canterbury has made a submission to the, either the annual plan or the long-term plan um, process. Uh, for those, uh, I was going to say uh, Emma Scripter, but for those who don't know me, I'm Di Keenan, but I think <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a board member of Tennis Canterbury, uh, and I'd like to extend a welcome to our other board members who are sitting in the gallery behind me, and I'll pass you over to Emma, who's going to take you through our submission. Cool. Uh, kia ora everyone, Emma here. Um, so you're really excited to share a, a bit about Tennis Canterbury and our story um, as well. So um, here on behalf of the 10,000 members that we have as part of our Canterbury tennis community, that's made up of, so Canterbury actually extends all the way from mainland here, South Canterbury, the West Coast, up to, to Marlborough as well. Um, our vision for Tennis Canterbury is to grow Canterbury tennis and ignite an enduring passion for the game. And um, someone like myself as well, who sort of stepped away from the sport for a few years, really wanting to have that opportunity as well to come back into the game and, and have it thriving at all for all ages and stages. 
Um, that with that vision, at really we see or our role is around to deliver tennis to to the community through coaching programs, tournaments, events, and things, um, making our game sustainable for the future and, and really inclusive um, of the different ethnicities and, and cultures as well from from around the Canterbury region. Um, providing quality and accessible facilities that that aren't cost prohibitive, obviously as well, to, to have access to be able to play the game. And our game doesn't survive if we don't have clubs and members as well. So um, our role is to support the clubs to be successful too. Uh, just a wee bit about us, uh, you know, with participants, I actually challenged Di on the, the two-year-old, who that was, but we've got participants from two um, that are they're enrolled all the way through to, to 90 years of age. So yes, as you can see, it is a, a sport that ap appeals to, to many for all age. Um, that, that membership really has got quite a diverse um, group there. We've, we've got, you know, two-thirds are largely New Zealand European, but we've got a real opportunity to grow that game in, in the, um, with our Asian community and Māori and Pacifica communities here as well. Um, we're, we're supported by four and a half FTE here, so quite a lean operation and a really significant volunteer network as well. Um, cool. I guess um, our unique proposition, so Wilding Park and, and the facilities that we have, um, we're one of the very few sports in the city that own and operate their own facility, um, a historic Wilding Park complex. Um, you can see up there that it's Anthony Wilding, former world number one back in um, about 100 years ago. We're still clinging, clinging to that, but real legacy <laughs> and um, really lucky to have that, that history as well. It is a real point of difference for us from, from other codes. Um, and tennis has historically met the cost of providing this, all its own services and, and things like that, while other sports have obviously able to access into some of the other council facilities, which are owned and maintained by, by yourselves, which is fantastic. Um, as an avid, yet like mediocre sports person myself, um, you know, having access to facilities like that is just, just incredible. Um, and we're really lucky that you guys um, support all the, the sports as well. I guess from... For us, we were able to um, benefit from that pre-earthquake um, back in 2011. We, we were supported by yourselves then, but it's something that we haven't been, been able to tap into really for the last 10 years. Uh, just a bit about the facilities that we have. Um, so at Wilding Park, there are six, as I said, there's six indoor courts, which are flat tack really with netball, tennis. We support, allow other sports in there, but, but obviously tennis as well. 18 outdoor courts and we've got nine new um, grass courts which are up to Wimbledon standards from the grass perspective, not the tennis perspective. Um, but we have uh, func an incredible function centre and then um, we're, we're down at Napunawai as well and we have 29 clubs here which also have all their own courts and things too. Um, being, you know, being um, a, a massive facility out in the east as well is, is a real draw card for, for um, tennis and an opportunity for us to really grow um, and be the sport for that particular area. Um, I guess our challenge, um, and we're not dissimilar to any other sports organisation, as you can imagine, but with, you know, with having um, a fantastic facility like the, the Wilding Park facility, it comes with being, you know, we've got an extreme privilege for that, but it also is, um, it's a bit of a weight for us to maintain as well at, at the moment. Um, you know, there's a growing cost to our members, um, so we are asking clubs and members to, put, they can currently contribute 400k a year to manage and support that facility, which um, is causing burden for them. And it's also creaking on some of those volunteers that we ask to support us. Uh, the other one is the rising maintenance costs. So um, court resurfacing is just, f for simplicity, 2K a court um, for ourselves. And then our grass courts are 60K a year to keep them to, to the level that we want as well. And plus general maintenance for the facility of the size and scale we're talking here. Um, and, and I guess the other part for us is um, having that facility. We don't, and we're, I guess we're at a point now where we're seeing a lot of our time and our money going into um, the maintenance and, and maintaining that facility and actually we want to put our focus right now onto getting more people into the game and um, as I said growing th there's a real opportunity right now participation has increased with COVID which has been lucky for our clubs it's continued to grow go up but actually we need to then support them as well to be sustainable for the future um, 
and as we said, post post the earthquake, um, we made the, the pretty courageous decision to carry on with the facility that, that we've got. Um, and we, you know, now we need to actually keep making sure that we can support and, and get the most out of that, that significant investment. Um, so I guess that, that's what, why we're here. So uh, for us, we're, we're, we're looking really to, to get a bit of assistance. So pre, pre the um, earthquake, you know, t going back 10 years, we, we did get a 90 k annual grant um, to support the costs of maintaining th those facilities. That came through the Strengthening Communities Fund and we're, we're really lucky and, and thankful for the 25 k that we're getting today. Our ask here is um, we're looking for 105k a year, ideally, um, to support those maintenance costs for Wilding Park and for our Napunawai facility um, so we can continue to operate at that same level. We're, we're also putting an ask in here really to support our clubs as well. So the cost, as you said, 29 um, member, members and our role really is around helping them to, to make sure they're sustainable too. Um, but as having some funds that we can draw down and deliver the pro rata out to our clubs at 45k a year. And you've got some fantastic people in the Council Parks team here, so that we've got nine great new courts. We'd love to be able to tap into some of that expertise that you've got to maintain and support or, or maybe take over looking after those for us to keep them to that standard. Um, and I guess we're open to any real form of conversation around some support to be able to keep us maintaining those the facility that we've got um, and to service that. So that was how we sliced and diced it, but really open to a conversation around that. Cool. Well, thank you and happy to take questions. Thank you. And thank you for what you do as well. I mean, it's... Um it's an incredible sport, tennis, and uh, you know there's there's just so many players, um, and it but it does require that organisational support, and then, as you're saying, sixty seven percent, I think you said for um, running the facilities as opposed to delivering the <laughs> the, the, the game. game. Yeah. yeah. So, um, has anyone got any questions? I have one. Yes, Dawn. Uh, so but it is unusual. <laughs> 10,000 members, and I think you say on your presentation 6,000 or so of those are from Christchurch, is mm -hmm. that yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you presenting to our neighbouring councils, recognising your membership is 10,000 yeah. yeah. and 60% of it comes from the city? Yes, we. I mean, we haven't to date, and I guess part of it is um, Wilding Park's largely, and it's not, but it's predominantly used by our Christchurch community. That's why we thought we'll come here first but really good point so we'll, we'll be taking that away dawn okay. thank you but yeah. look th thank you very much and it's um i mean yeah i'm i've been to wilding park for games you know I've, I've watched incredible games there it's a fantastic facility and um one of the few that that you know was did so well after the earthquakes mm -hmm. and yeah so it, no it's um thank you very much oh aaron I've just got a mathematical question um, because it always helps with making decisions. Is have you done a breakdown of your ten thousand members and the amount of support they currently get from the council at a per participant rate versus rugby, rugby league, football, hockey, and all that? Because we supply facilities and things, and like we saw with the pier before, it's easier if we don't do it, someone else delivers it, and we might chip in. But an equation that shows the amount that tennis gets per person will be quite good up against everyone else that we help, right through to yachting, whatever it is. But uh, yeah. some highlights, lowlights would be quite good. I mean, if you're already getting some more than everyone else, don't I say mean, anything. You, you could feed that through. We could also put a yeah, question we'll to staff through, just, definitely. to start thinking about uh, that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Would, okay. That, yes. that so it just makes it point. helpful to then go, it oh, does. we're actually not helping them much. Or, yeah, makes yeah. for a strong case. Thank you. Yeah, and I think Emma made the point that, you know, um, a lot of the sports are played on council facilities, you know, the aquatic sports in the pools, etc., and the fields, yeah. yeah. That's great. Look, thank you very much for your presentation today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, councillors, this comes to the point where I need to adjourn the meeting uh, to 1pm Monday the 9th of May. Thank you very much.